And so now in this video, we're going to look at our next method, which is basically just a extension of the disk method. So it's called the washer method. All right. And we're going to use the washer method if there are any gaps in our solid. Basically, the idea is we're going to find a big volume, subtract away the unwanted volume, and that'll give us the area we actually care about. All right, this is similar to how we find the area between curves. We would find the area between these two curves. We basically take the top curve and subtract away the bottom curve. Same thing if we have this kind of solid that has a hole in the middle. We would basically find the solid, or the volume of the big solid, subtract off the volume of that hole, and then we get our uh, answer that we want. So it's just like finding the area between curves. We're just doing it with solids now instead. All right, so find the volume of the solid generated by rotating the area bounded by y equals x and y equals 1 over x over 1, 4. And we're going about the x-axis, so we don't need to change our direction. And so let's draw a picture to start. y equals x is going to be this diagonal line and 1 over x choose this color is going to be like that and we're doing it from 1 to 4 so from there to 4 gives us this area so we're taking this area and rotating it around if you think about what this would look like, all right, this is just a single point that's going to get rotated around. All right, and this is a kind of thing that'll give me a circle on the outside, a smaller circle on the inside. That's what it'll be something that looks like that. That's a terrible drawing, but it's kind of a, a funnel with a hole through the middle. All right, but if you visualize this kind of white region being rotated around. All right, but when we set up our integral, well, it's from the x value one to the x value four. The bigger volume is gonna be created by the outside function, which is x. And we're gonna subtract off the smaller volume we don't want, which will be created by this bottom function, which is one over x. So it's basically the exact same thing as finding an area between curves, except for I made a mistake, because that'd be if I just wanted to find that area. I want to find the volume of the solid, so I'm going to change it a bit, because the big area is pi r squared, so pi x squared. And subtract off the other area, pi times 1 over x squared. So you can see I even made the mistake that it's really similar to when you're just finding the area between the curves. The only difference instead of finding the area of just using the two values, you're taking these basically circles, which are pi r squared, and you're subtracting those away from each other. Right, so really similar, you said to use the pi r squared for the circle rather than just the value itself. Right, so a little bit of simplifying. And now I should be able to take the antiderivative Add one to the power, divide by the new power. This is x to the negative two, is going to be x to the negative one, divided by negative one, and evaluated from one to four. All right, so once again, I'll pause the recording here, plug in all these numbers, and simplify to get to the final answer. All right, and after plugging these numbers in and simplifying a bit, I get 81 pi over four is the volume of the solid. All right, so again, the basic idea really similar to basically you're combining the two things we've done before, right? finding the area between the curves and finding the volume of a revolution. Right? The only thing you do, right, you subtract the kind of bigger function from the smaller function. Only thing is thing you're doing different from area between curves, you're using the pi r squared parts that you're subtracting. Right, but very similar, I right, just with a solid rather than an area.